Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Being a PC gamer of late has been absolutely fantastic. There's tons of excellent games. Processors are faster than ever and you can get some really good deals on them. But the main cause of contention, of course, have been graphics cards. And both AMD and Nvidia have been dealing with shortages, but there is some good news. Lisa Sue and the team over at AMD seem very much poised to rescue us from those shortages. Allow me to elaborate. So, recently, uh, the CEO of, AM of AMD, Lisa Sue, was being interviewed by Tony Hu. Hopefully, I've pronounced that correctly. And he is the general manager over at ASUS China. I'll leave a link to this in the video description, of course. And uh, basically, she was stating just how well the RX 9000 series graphics cards have been received by gamers and how they are very much intending to increase manufacturing and eliminate shortages. Of course, everyone likes very high-end GPUs, she said, but not so many people can access them. The 9070 XT has been a fantastic success. Actually, it's the number one seller for all AMD Radeon generation's first week sales by far by 10x more than our previous generation, and we like to see that people are happy. People are happy with the 9070 XT, and we are very excited about it and increasing manufacturing so that gamers can access it, end quote. Now, she also mentions a little bit later in this very same interview that they will also be releasing the 9060. Well, she didn't specifically mention it by name. She said that they will also be releasing further models of uh, RDNA 4 in a lower end variants. But let's circle back to the 9070, shall we? Now, let's just be honest, guys, and I've said this in previous videos, cards such as, I don't know, the 5090, that's a good example. Let's even ignore the shortages and just assume you were able to buy one at MSRP, which is around, what, 2,000 bucks, right? That's a lot of money. There is a lot of money. And I, I personally think for a lot of PC gamers, those are fantastic Halo products and they are very exciting and they're very cool to talk about. But again, even if you were able to buy one of those things at MSRP, it is very expensive. And so, of course, it's not going to appeal to everyone. And I think that um, having a good availability of product is important yes but also having a number of cards which are available in mainstream pricing and again you know if, let's say 500 600 us dollars it's still a large chunk of change there's no doubt about it it's not like it's not it's not like a spare of the moment purchase for a lot of folks but i also think it's a lot more accessible you can kind of save up over a couple of you know several you know several months maybe a year or something like that sell your old card what have you and that is a lot more accessible especially because not everyone lives in let's say united kingdom where i'm from or united states canada what have you for certain regions obviously their buying power is just less and it's just a lot harder so i think having a product which is reasonably affordable and it just works now that yet yeah, is something that jensen said but i do think this is really important i i also would point out that i think amd and nvidia um i think there is work to do um nvidia perhaps a little more so than amd in some ways but uh, i think that having a plug and play solution to a degree where games will be auto optimized for the gpu yes if you're a hardcore you know enthusiast you're going to want to tweak things yourself mess around with settings and so on but i think for a lot of folks just having something where it's just pick up play at a good price there's no there's no issues with it i think that's going to be really important but let's move on to another interesting story actually and again this is courtesy of the very same interview this one's a bit of a head scratcher, but also quite intriguing. Um, Lisa was asked basically whether Strix Point Halo would make its way to, well, the desktop. Now, there is something that's a little tricky about this. So, the desktop, let's just ignore AM4 because we know it's not going to come out, you know, to that platform. It's going to be almost certainly AM5 if they were to bring it to an AM platform. But even that has a problem because the actual socket itself is not the same it uh strix point halo uses fp11 so it's not like you could just be like plonk 
But even so, Lisa was asked about this and she said, yes, yes, of course. Now, it's possible that there would be some type of custom board and this may be something that happens with like small form factor builds or something along those lines. It's also going to be interesting to see how memory is handled in that particular configuration as well. Again, we don't know enough details about this. She was very she was very wishy-washy. She just said, yes, of course. And unfortunately, there was no follow-up exactly how that's going to be achievable. It'll be very interesting, though, to see what actually is done about this. I... I can imagine it would be quite popular with folks who want to do AI work as well because of the a lot of RAM that's got involved. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be one of those products where not everyone wants it. But for those who do want it or are interested by it, I can definitely understand the appeal. One final thing for AMD before I close out the video: Gorgon Point. This is actually for FP8. And uh, basically, what you can think of for Gorgon Point is take Strix Point and then just make things faster. So we have known, and I say known in a kind of loose sense, in other words, AMD haven't confirmed this, at least to my knowledge, but uh, it seems pretty widely accepted at the stage that RDNA 4 is not going to find its way into, let's just say, an APU. Instead, we'll see RDNA 3.5, which of course is Strix point, and then they're going to move straight on to UDNA. Um, and this Gorgon's point refresh is still using RDNA 3.5, but also sticking to Zen 5. So there's no Zen 6 architecture here. But um, the outlet JN Tech Review leaked a couple of slides, the first of which is an overview of the stack, and you can see a nice comparison. Let's just focus on Gorgon 9 here, R9, excuse me, 12. C Zen 5, RDNA 3.5, XDNA 2, 55 tops. And then if we look over to the left, we can see how that compares against Strix R9. Again, 12C Zen 5, RDNA 3.5, yada, yada, yada. So it's not like they're adding additional cores, at least assuming this slide is legitimate and accurate. It's pretty much the same thing, albeit with some slight and subtle improvements, for example, clock frequency. And this is actually reflected rather well with the performance slide, again, assuming this is accurate. Um, so, for example, if we were to pick on... Um, what's a good one? Well, actually, any of them. The 1T uh, over all of the different wattages. If we look at 1T um, performance, it's essentially... It, it's a small uptick. It's not a big deal, like a couple of percent, like 5 6%, what have you. And then obviously when multiple threads are being loaded up, there's a large improvement. So again, if you have a Strix Point laptop, you may not exactly want to upgrade. With that said, if you have a higher end variant, then there's gonna perhaps, sorry, if you have like an older variant, then perhaps there could be more of a reason to. With that said, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Um, hopefully normal service shall resume tomorrow or the day after. Uh, with that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.